ఇప్పుడు శ్రీ సుందరం గారు అఖిల భారతీయ స్వదేశ జాగరణ మంచి కన్వీనర్ గారిని మాట్లాడవలసిందిగా కోరుకుంది Vishweshwar Reddy Gauru. He was one of the uh, celebrated business persons of the globe, not only in India. But I think he will be enjoying his new avatar as a politician. Indresh Reddy, Srinath, Harish Babu, Sudhagar and my fellow travelers for more than 30-35 years, Annada, Lingamurthy, Lingam Srinath and others. the city of uh, hyderabad is always fascinating to me so my connection with hyderabad goes back to more than 30 years having two three glasses of hussein sagar water cleans us your system as well as the mind so i have experienced it uh, today is uh, another such day the country has completed the biggest democratic exercise of the world peacefully the people have delivered their verdict they have expressed their needs and they have also expressed their aspirations So now after this, I think this is the first meeting I am attending. So there is, there is enormous tension in my mind because our organization has to devise a growth model for the country based on the experience and based on the aspirations of our people. I am not an economist by myself. I am a chartered accountant by profession. But in the last 45 years, I have been traveling to the length and breadth of the country, meeting hundreds and hundreds of people and trying to understand the various regions as well as the economic dimensions. So whatever, whatever I speak today is based on my practical experience. Economics is a subject which deals with the behavior of the people and you cannot capture the behavior of the people through permutations and combinations or formulas and equations because it is subject to change always. But even then, there are other issues There are social thinkers, there are intellectuals who try to contemplate a vision for development from time to time. I can start back from Ramayana days. After the war was over, the story is well known to everybody but I have to start somewhere. Krishna told Rama this Sri Lanka is so beautiful. We don't we shift your headquarters to Sri Lanka and then we don't go to a very backward place like Ayodhya. Janani Janma Bhumishta Sukha Devi Gariyasi. That was his reply of Rama to his younger brother. So that is a national the idea of Sudeshi begins from there, if not earlier. Because I know that I think that there might be some instances earlier also. In the year 1905, Magarishi Arabindo articulated a vision, Swadeshi education. He was of the very firm, firm view. If one is imparted Swadeshi education, 
then he will take care of the rest of the things. For him, Sudeshi education was fundamental. So his days were almost in alliance with the freedom fighting days. So he says that look, boycott of foreign goods will lead to elimination of foreign mindset, dependence on foreign mindset. And then people will be freed from the slavery mentality and that will give birth to independent and prosperous India. So his thoughts were developed as per his wish at other time. Then there are people like you know, radicals, we are sour family. So we, we need their own our inspiration. He says that these people must be taught a lesson, we must burn anything that is foreign. Then came the days of Mahatma Gandhi. He, gave, he tried to give a different definition to Pradesh. Neighborhood economics. See that your labor is prosperous. So that you live in peace. For him, India as a whole doesn't count. He was always worried about the neighbor, neighboring village, neighboring town, neighboring district, etc. He enunciated a very big concept, integral humanism. He laid a path for the holistic development of man. And he always measured the success of any economic policy, keeping the last man in mind, Antiodia. If the goods are delivered to the last man in this hierarchy, he said the economic policy can be considered to be successful. Then our founder, Dagopan Kegri, who, who articulated his economic vision after 40 45 years of. Uh, the birth of integral humanism. I am given 30 minutes time. So he thought the third way. Third way is that the country he, during his days was caught between communism and capitalism. And communism failed throughout the world. And the capitalists emerged saying that this is the only way the world can move forward. So he intervened at that stage and said there is a third way. He has not defined what is third way. He says every country has its own the model of development and that will also change from time to time. God has given different question papers to different countries and you are supposed to answer to the question paper given to you and not the other. So his vision was very simple. So with all these things they today we after that his, his book was written in the 1990s, now we are in 1924. 34 years after the book was written. And based on our understanding so far, we have to lay our future form. That's a challenge before us. But even though the world is changing, certain things remain constant. Certain ideas remain constant. For example, self-reliance. There cannot be any compromise on that. To borrow the words of Prime Minister Othman Rilber Borat, there cannot be any compromise on that. Using our own local goods, there cannot be any compromise on that. So there are certain ideas that is always constant even in this changing world. But many factors affect our thinking because we live in an interconnected world. It's a fact. We cannot come out of that. So developments elsewhere will have its impact on the Indian economy, on the Indian people. The evolution of people, for example, 30, 40 years before, we learned something. Then new evolutions have taken place. People have become more educated. The literacy rate across the globe has gone up from 20% to 80%. People have learned many things. So this will also impact the economic thought process in a substantial way. Technology. 
the advent of the internet you all know it completely manifested itself and then we it made us to think in a different way altogether not known before now 5g 6g and all these things are there the natural factors will also play a part for example covid before covid people like us were always on the defense especially sudesh jagat much we we were opposing this violent globalization and in spite of our repeated warnings the world was never interested in listening to us including the indian policy makers but now after this covid now i am hearing lot of words decentralized globalization deglobalization reglobalization restricted globalization now I, i don't know these are all the things which we have been explaining in the words today but now they are coined in new words and kadasi prime minister came out with the statement human centric globalization so what i am trying to say is the nature will also whenever it want to teach us a lesson it will teach so this covid has played though it has enormously damaged every section of the society in every part of the world but it has inculcated a new spirit of sudesh so in this world we live now what is the way forward for a country like india uh ji ji we were mentioning about tfr demography is destiny population is your asset india year 1990 i was also reading economics i thought that the population of in, in india if you go back to 1960s and 70s and if you ask any celebrated economists what is the reason for the backwardness of this country he will immediately come out with the solution that our population is very high so we are not able to develop the country in the way in which we want but dr boshelkar the then chairman of csir he articulated a word that population is an asset that that changed the entire concept of the thinking process of the sudesh government we have been articulating the concept that population is an asset for the last 30 35 years now it has been conclusively proved when the go when the un agency published its uh, recent population statistics they mentioned that 9 billion lives but immense possibilities so the idea of looking at population as an asset is now established throughout the world i do by japan it population is 10% of japan will not be there after 10 years japan cannot dream of growing any more 15% of europe will not be there even 10% of china will not be there after maybe 20 25 years so we are going to have this advantage of productive human resources of about 100 crore of people till the year 2050 So this is the greatest advantage we have. So the responsibility you now, the responsibility now lies with us. No country has faced this challenge of productively employing almost hundred crore of people. Every country had its demographic advantage. America had it. The total population of America was thirty crores. The demographic asset was around ten crores. They handled only ten crores. other countries are very less even china when they had this advantage they handled only 30 40 crores but today i have to handle 90 crores so with this view in mind the sudeshi government has embarked on a very ambitious program for the last 3 4 years under the name and title of swalambi bharat abhiyan the idea is make use of the population now uh, i i will give some statistics because if i close my speech without giving statistics you may conclude that i have not come without preparation <laughs> there are 
65 million informal unincorporated non agricultural enterprises in india in 22 23 they employed about 11 crore people so if you add agriculture to that the number goes to 30 crore and if you add msme to that the number crosses 50 crore so almost 75% of the economic activity revolves around these people and they are exactly my constitution so hereafter you are mentioning about jobless growth we have people who are day in and day out creating employment sustaining themselves so now we have to go and identify them and give them a big helping hand so there is a small piece of article in times of india elite mindset is not going to solve jobs issue the other mentions that mass flourishing law flourishing flourishing in groups how grassroots innovation created jobs challenge and change in many of the countries and he concludes that many people not just a few famous one were coming up with ideas and businesses such wise trust thinking entrepreneurship let the period of economic and personal prosperity that he calls mass flourishing so to conclude india's innovation and economic potential cannot be unlocked by a small elite imagine this sort of future but every small town and city feels like bangalore or hyderabad bustling with innovation brimming with opportunity and alive with the entrepreneurial spirit of young people so the swedish uh, government bunch in the coming days our entire thought process will be will revolve around the maximum utilization of the human resources which has which god has bestowed on us so i request each and every one of you in this great city of hyderabad to join us in our mission so i think i am well on thank you uh, thank you very much for a very patient visit to you 45 years as a chartered account professional and as a convener of the swadeshi jagran manch all india by visiting many places all over the length and breadth of the country by having with having the rich experience and sharing with us we are uh, very much delighted with your speech moreover the more population is not a sign of the anti development of the country it's an asset to the country the concept has been changed like that as you said with the statistic data for that also we are very much thankful to you sir